welcome to day three. That two and a half kind of threw me off last time. So day three of 100 days of practice. So last night I had a symphony rehearsal and we have a bowing change, which always happens. That's a totally normal thing. Um, you know, uh, the concert master and, and me as a principal and, and the viola and the cello principals, as, as we play, we we get more of a feel for the tempo and what the conductor wants and then what all the sections want and how we can all work together. Um, so Boeing's change. Um, the problem for me that's always been trouble about that is I, you know, I get things in my muscle memory. And so it's hard to unlearn a Boeing and then relearn a new Boeing. Um, but that's, that's part of the, the fun of, of being in orchestra specifically and also chamber music, actually anywhere. You're gonna be changing Boeings a lot. It just depends on the situation. Um, and actually, if you watch, I remember a student told me about, um, I think uh, Itzhak Perlman, she was really, really into um, Schindler's List. And she saw, she watched a bunch of YouTubes of him performing it, and she said, he kept changing the bowing, because she was trying to emulate what he was doing with the bows, right? And so you get the, the score, and you know, all the bowings are written in there, obviously. And I said, well, yeah because sometimes the orchestra might be taking a different tempo and sometimes it's a pro I might just be feeling it differently you know I know even Boeing's will will change um, when I play with bands uh, sometimes we plug in sometimes we have a, a pickup on our instruments because we have a drummer well I 100% use way more bow when there's a drummer and there's more sound right the more the sound that's around you the more you want to you know push your sound out I'm going to use more bows because I just, I'm not going to project with that nice, slow, pretty, long bow. Um, whereas when we're not plugged in, I use a lot less bow. And I'll use these big, full, whole bows because I can, because I can be heard. So anyway, lots of reasons why bowings change um, based on the situation. So the whole reason that I went on that tangent is because I am learning a new bowing today. So originally, it wasn't up, up. Um, pencil was in my bow. <laughs> that was fun. Okay. <laughs> I always want to get stuck in there. Um, so it originally was. Something like that. But last night it became that all of the 16ths after the slur are now up bow. And so. I am clearly having trouble with that. So um, if I were to really kick it back to basic, if I was having tons and tons of trouble with the bowing and I couldn't get my left and my right to work together, I would suggest doing open strings. So you play the open string that the notes are on, okay? Um, that way you're, you're teaching your right arm to feel everything as if you were playing the left hand, but you're not. So a good thing is to kind of rest your left hand. And you'll probably have to play it slower because your brain will want to put your left fingers down even though you can't. Okay, so I gotta get my rhythm. <laughs> D da da D da 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 D da da. actually it's kind of simple because I'm not having to cross the strings a lot on the up ups they're on the same string which is nice and same with even the slurs those are on the same string right <laughs> just by doing the open strings, right? You almost trick your brain into doing stuff sometimes by simplifying it. Or being like, it's okay, you do have this. It's a simpler thing than you think it is. This is 92. Yeah, it's definitely faster than I was doing it. 
I was being a little empathetic with myself. <laughs> sympathetic, sympathetic. Okay, one, two. <laughs> I keep wanting to go on. Uh, one, two. Well, that was fun for my left hand. I fell off the string. Let's try again. One, two. Yeah, it works. I'm, I'm getting it in my muscle memory. I can say, though, that 100% and tensing up. <laughs> Doing that, right? So that would be the next thing I would start working on is not tensing up, right? Which means it just needs to get back in my muscle memory. So I might slow down the metronome a little bit and then gradually speed it up so it's not as scary. It shouldn't feel scary when you're playing something. Um, a little anticipation, yes, but your whole body should not be tensing up. That means you need to be practicing it a little bit more at a slower tempo and then gradually speeding it up, okay? And that's my practice talk for today. Hope you're doing well. Let me know. Check in with me. I checked in with some students uh, already today. Everyone's coming back and so far so good. Most people are, are on the, the path. Um, and if you haven't started and you're waiting for after spring break, totally understand that. That's also cool too. If you are doing it and you're on spring break vacation, remember there are tons of ways to practice even if you don't have your violin. I would check out Hilary Hahn's Instagram because she's, I think she's on day 98 and uh, I didn't get to watch it with the sound on, but basically last night's uh, version was her looking at the computer and, and literally she didn't have her violin. She was watching probably a video of herself playing or maybe even the score and practicing mental practice, right? Playing all the notes and hearing it in her head, but seeing the music. So she had no violin because she was very exhausted. I think is what the caption said. And I'm guessing that her little one was probably um, in bed or whatnot too. It's probably late at night. I uh, I can understand that. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, I just had a talk with a student and I, I said, well, because she gets car sick. So I said, oh, bring your music, you know, look at the score and listen to it in your ear, in your earbuds. She gets car sick, so she can't look at books. So I said, all right, don't look at the score. Just close your eyes and listen to the music and imagine playing it and seeing the score in front of you. And if you can't visualize the score, you don't know the notes well enough, listen to it, try to count, start tapping and, and try to get that beat, that pulse, the tempo, and start kind of trying to feel the, the rhythm of what it is on the page. That's good practice. Just getting it in your ear is good practice. Okay, I said I was gonna go and here I am talking again. <laughs> All right, have a good one. We'll see you next time.